and welcome back to another cup of joe and dakota hope you guys are having a wonderful day and let's kick it off the week with a beautiful cup of joe and dakota let's do it so I mean, you guys are here <laughs> you're doing the same damn thing so today we discussed the bearded drifter Ooh. and we relate this to the drifting that may you know yeah, maybe take it's... part in life are you just drifting along we're gonna try and get you out of it and we continue to taste New Mexico's uh, a coffee roast. And this week, the Trifecta Coffee Company. That, so, uh, so that's what we're brewing. Ooh. Come back to this. I'm curious to hear what you're brewing, by the way. You know, hopefully you're drinking coffee. Um, are, have you tried any of the coffees that, Comments. you know, we've uh, discussed here in the past yeah. few months? Yeah. Have you went out, tried any of the coffees we've said? I mean, have me or Joe been too critical of one did we not give one enough credit were we spot on let us know down in the comments i'd, I'd love to hear you guys feedback and and also if you uh do uh, pick one of these coffees just let them know that kill free co uh so i can give you guys a try i mean i think we've only had one coffee that we're like eh. yeah no, i, I so, feel like me and joe are pretty pretty open I, I i feel hopefully you guys aren't getting after me but like i feel like every time i say it's a good cup of joe or this is a good coffee but it's <laughs> and that's, that's not even me trying to be overly nice. Like, I really feel like it takes a lot to really fuck up a cup of coffee. And when you do it, it's very evident. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, there can be ones that I don't like as much as others. But I mean, it's not a preference. As a, yeah, preference at that point, you know? Yeah. Fair enough. Into that, having a beard. Yeah. Yours is too short. <sighs> Yours is too long. That's what I mean. <laughs> well, yours is too patchy. Whoa! <laughs> I, anyway, so if you got a dickhead like this guy that wants to t just talk shit, yep. Sometimes, don't you don't gotta give in. You don't just gotta drift with the punches. You know, yep. You can just say fuck that guy. You know, sometimes you gotta go against the norm. You know, having facial hair. We've said it before in this grand video we have but like it's becoming a little more acceptable in the workplace right mm -hmm. now there is those certain jobs if you gotta wear you know a respirator you sure. firemen out there right uh you know you're going in you're working with dangerous chemicals you know you gotta sure. you gotta have a mask. those are I mean, clearly, exceptions. clearly you can't have facial hair with that that's just that's that there's no way around that unfortunately but for the other you know, 90% of the population. If you're just at a business and they just are not about the facial hair, you guys really should look up the ladder. Is that person that's telling you that? they Can they grow facial hair? Maybe they were bullied by somebody else because that's really what it comes down to. Right. Clearly me and Joe were joking. I don't know why you got to bring the patchiness into it though, but we will look past that. But like, were they just bullied? And now they, they have a great beard, but they just keep shaving it off. Right. Because they think it's not acceptable. I mean, tattoos aren't acceptable and we're starting to see a lot more people with those too. So, I mean, what I'm trying to say here is if you keep giving in to those and you're just drifting along and you're not really happy, but you, you want to have facial hair, we've got the products for you. Especially, I like to add to that, like, we're, we're adding the Beard Drifter. We kind of just came up with that on the whim. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's like years ago, before I even thought of oh, Kilt Beard Co. and whatnot, I had my beard probably about right here. This was post-Dakota known Joe. Yes. I've seen pictures of that glorious thing. And damn, I... But there was times when, when it did not look glorious. Uh, and boy. my dad goes to me one day, you look like a homeless man. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Are you okay? I think so. He's like, he's like, shave that off. You look like a homeless man. Mm, I've gotten that same comment, Joe. I'm like, thanks, Dad. But I could easily have taken that like, oh, I'm just gonna shave this off. Mm -hmm. Or everybody, buddy, looks at me as a homeless man, or whatnot. Uh, and the thing is, it's a beard should be something of confidence, mm -hmm. and and honestly, it it does something to take pride in. Yeah. It, right. I mean, it is more of a um, distinctive look for a male. Uh, it it really is. I mean, we're clearly biased on that but, situation, but I would have to agree. But like, you have a person that um, 
will have a comment to just bring you down or make mm -hmm. your self image um, it'll, it'll be taken down. And then you can go through your whole life or a long period of, of your life being like, I shave it because everybody says that it doesn't mm -hmm. look good on me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what they think. It's better mm -hmm. what, what you think. What you think. And think. your self confidence and in, in general is more important. Plus, if you're around those type of people, honestly, you shouldn't be around those type of people. And, well, like, you know, honestly, you shouldn't. It's like when you grow out your hair for everybody out there that's still... You still got your hair. Um, if lucky. you grow out your hair... Yeah, lucky. Lucky is a... That's a... I mean, bald and proud. But <laughs> having having a nice head of hair is, is something to uh, be proud of. But right. you're going to have to go through that weird, awkward stage. Same to be said about the beard. You got to get past that. Somebody's going to key, key in on that, and they're going to say something. And it solely comes down to confidence and like i hinted at the beginning we've got the products to get you that confidence to stay with it the first one being our amazing beard oils this one in particular is our americano because we're drinking coffee today might as well have a coffee smelling beard oil makes sense it's great you know that that's gonna help get the the nice glorious oils and fats that your facial hair is gonna want your skin's gonna want it's gonna because realistically we're not really taking care of the hair we're taking care of the face to let and distribute all that beautiful oils from your face right so you want to keep that skin happy that's what the oil is going to do right john so um to add to that so there's um like a, like a natural oil it's called sebum mm -hmm. uh and that goes from your skin it goes up the shaft of the follicle and basically unnourishes your, your skin and your follicle mm -hmm. these oils enhance that and or add to the sebum mm -hmm. so that you can cover more area and keeps your beard healthy. In general, that's what it is mm -hmm. made for. The scents are great, yeah. but we're looking for the health of the beard. More, more than the scent. Right. The health of the beard is what we're looking mm -hmm. for when we come to the oil. Um, the scent is one thing, but the um, what, the ingredients to um, take advantage of the sebum mm -hmm. and to enhance it is what we're trying to do. And that's what the beard oil will so, do. So, first off, you're starting to grow out your facial hair. You've got it. Here we go. We're starting all over again mm -hmm. you know you you got to take care of it you got to make sure it stays happy if it's happy you're going to be happy right if it's itchy and you're sitting there constantly scratching it somebody's going to key in on that they're going to say something and then you're going to be like man you know oh, you're starting to drift you're starting to drift you don't want to drift you don't want to drift we're going to keep you on the straight and narrow you're going to you're going to want to be happy with it you're going to want to keep it first step to that is a good beard oil something that's going to help hydrate the skin keep the follicles hydrated Next step, it's a little longer. You're starting to notice, okay, hey, the oil's doing great, but I need something maybe a little bit more. So we got our best damn beard butter. Beard butter. So beard butter, as you guys may know and been watching, it's meant to condition. So you're going to rid the beard itch for sure with this. Mm -hmm. I, I almost put, would put money on this in Vegas. Uh, I mean, I would. I'm not even possibly. I'm putting my money on it. So you're going to win. So, so most people will not get past like day 60, day 90 ish mm -hmm. um, because they can't get past the beard itch. Well, you're not going to be thinking about it because you're going to have a good product to get rid of the beard itch, mm -hmm. which is going to get you into those next stages of length and styling and um, that whole entire what you expect and to it's have gonna a beard. start. If you've got a significant other that is always after you, oh, it stabs me. It's, it's so right. scratchy. Is this? If you start to hear that, Early on in your, your beard journey, I would highly suggest getting the best damn beard butter. Because what it's going to do is it's going to go in, it's going to hydrate, and it's going to start to soften that hair. Absolutely. You're going to want to touch it, right? I can use my experience with my wife. Mm -hmm. I've told you guys before about when I grew out my beard. I do shit with that thing. I just let it go, and my wife hated every single second of it. It was, it was scratchy. It was... It it I truly did look homeless. Right. I look back now, and maybe some of y'all were right that told me that. But the sec, the, you know, the second time I did it, the one I just shaved off, that one when I said I was doing it again, she was like, "No," and I'm like, "I have a reason. I have a reason." And it was it was starting this kill beard co, and we came out with the best damn beard butter, and we played with it. We've said it before. I'm not gonna beat a dead horse with that, but we were playing with it. And after a while, all of a sudden, my wife was like, hey, what? she wanted she wanted to touch it. Right. It became softer. So what I'm trying to say is if you got that significant other that does not want anything to do with you with facial hair, 
Start using the beer butter. And it doesn't even have to be this long. It should be way shorter. Start rubbing that in your face at night. It's going to soften that up. And then we can get to the next step. You can get a little longer. Then you want to start, you know, maybe some constructive criticism for the hairs that just don't want to cooperate. So some beer balm. Um, we'll, I get oh. to the styling. So I have, so in my beard today, I have beard oil. I actually have Highlands beard oil. Oh, that's uh, nice. So I got the roots on and everything underneath because you want to get the skin. Mm -hmm. And then I put some beer balm in mm -hmm. and I took my comb and I hair dried it really quick mm -hmm. down to make it more straighter, more fuller. So this is going to help you style it, look, make it look uh, presentable mm -hmm. at work uh, to your loved ones, to your social circles, et cetera, like that. It's going to have a nice scent. It's also um, going to last for quite a while. And once you've gone through the stages of it getting soft, you can do more with it. Mm -hmm. And it kind of is like a tree. Like when like wind blows this, it goes back to where it's supposed to be. It's so, not going to. Yeah, so it's, it's tamed. It, it, it is tamed. Um, tamed. Yeah. But it's not going to be an aggressive hold to the point where it's going to look fake. Mm -hmm. And I don't yeah, want it to be all like yeah. wet looking and fake looking. I want it to look natural. And if that's the look you're going for, that's great. And they make wet, uh, like heavy waxes for that. Correct. You want to go into those beard competitions? We do not have anything for that yet. I'll just say that. But if you just want a more professional if you're getting those comments of you need to shave that you look homeless you don't look professional enough don't drift into that don't fall for that come to kill beard coat look straighten out a little bit we'll help you out we'll, we'll give you the products yep. i mean we can't say that it's gonna change your mind but we'll definitely take you in the steps and venture off and get you back on track where you should be back on track Get it to look professional. Get back I mean, on the bearded path. I would argue that, you know, if we, you know, had some different attire on right now, I'd say we look pretty professional with our facial hair. Yeah. Even with mine being patchy, but that's okay. You're just, you're just a hater. They don't get there. I'm just saying that because uh, many people hear that from people. It is it is one that you, ha I've said it once, mm -hmm. I'll say it a billion times. I'll beat that dead horse. You have to let it grow. Right. You, if it's bound to happen. I mean, yes, Joe is right. I do have patchy faces. If you let it grow, it's this magical thing that happens. If you've been watching these videos, you've all of a sudden seen my facial hair kind of start to fill out. It's not because it's filled out. It's gotten a little longer. So hairs start to hide things. And it's a beautiful process. Yep. And the more soft you get it, the more it's going to be happy. Right. And hide all those hatchy places you got on your face. So at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, get you some oil. Get you some good butter. Best damn beard butter. We've got it for you. We make it simple. And then after that, once it gets a little longer, it's starting to kind of get crazy. You're getting that homeless look. The balm. The balm. Get you some balm. Tame that bitch. Get it under control. You're going to look professional. You can go into the office and be like, hey, piss off. I look professional. You right. can say what you want. I mean, I'm not telling you to go tell your boss <laughs> to piss off. Do not do that because Kill Beard Co. sent you to do that. Not saying that at all. But you can go with... You can have that confidence that, no, I'm going to keep my facial hair. I look professional. I just look, I look just as professional as you. I just look better because <laughs> you have a beard. Well, you also you know, take care of your facial hair, right? Well, which is more than just taking mm -hmm. a, a godly razor to your face and freaking just scraping that stuff off. And trims. Trims are necessary. You know, we should talk about that one day about trims and everything We'll, like we'll get back to that. Yeah. But trims are necessary. My... Yeah, beautiful wife that is watching this is probably going to hold that against me because I tend to be against the trim, but trims are necessary. But like Joe's a perfect example of that. He got it trimmed, and I would argue that it looks way better. No, no, it does. It, it really does. But anyway, subjective. What's so continue on drifting? Yeah, yeah. Newsletter this week. So, which is a good one, by the way. Again, I say it week in and week out. Newsletter's great, and it's free. So drifting. Um, Many of us will go through life or are going through life in a drifting mode. And what we mean by that is that we just take what is as what it is. So, for example, you're, you're trying to get that promotion or you've been promised that promotion and um, they give you extra work. Mm -hmm. But they never give you that promotion, and you just accept it as it is, is what it is. It's gonna come. It's gonna come. Yeah, it, We've it, all heard that come. one before. We're working on it. We're we're just working on the scope of it. Or it's gonna go through finance. It's gotta go through whatever. Mm -hmm. 
you don't have to accept this. And oh, I got to go talk to such and such and make sure it's right. okay. You don't have to accept this. Um, oh, lucky for us, we're in one of those countries that you can like really peace out and you can go to another job, get paid more money, or you can do a side hustle, start your own business, things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's many options out there. Don't accept what it is. I always am a big believer and I hold true to this and many people who I've worked with in the past, especially in the corporate world, I'm always wanting people to do their best work. I want to support them to help them do their best work. If they don't feel comfortable or they don't want to do something anymore, I'm like, what can we do to make you happy to get you to the point of where you're doing your best work? Even if it's not on my team, um, in my company, or with the company I'm working for. I want that person to be successful and happy in life more than them just you know punching in, punching out, going home, and dr like drinking themselves to a stupor or something like that. I want them to be happy so that they're getting fulfillment. And if you are not feeling those things of getting fulfillment, you're drifting in life. You're, mm. you're not doing your best work. You're not maximizing yours or your family's potential outcome. And that's the whole gist of this week's newsletter is to kind of help, help you snap out of drifting and to also at the same time be able to notice it a lot, a lot more quickly mm -hmm. so that you're not going a decade at a company doing the same work when you've been wanting to do something for a long time. Go do that other thing. Take that step. Yes, it, it, there's going to be fear. There's going to be all these different emotions that might come into it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there's many like motivational videos we, I will say. We talked about it. And, like, this is one of the very first episodes of Cup of Joe with Dakota, right? And that we talked about how chaos is right. good. Yeah. Right? If you're at a point where there's, like, everything is just super smooth, you're probably drifting. Yeah. I mean, everything's going great, so that's amazing. But you're probably drifting. There's some things that you probably could be doing, but you're not because everything's going great. I would challenge you, stir the pot. Mm -hmm. Make your life a little more challenging. Get out of that drifting mentality. Take a step back and jump. You know, like, instead of, you know, oh, I'll mow the lawn tomorrow. Go to mow the lawn right now. Pause this video. Go do it. Don't come at me like that. But, uh, you know, go do the dishes. If you got that sink full of dishes, you got to go vacuum. You know, I, I, you are, there's that next step at your job that you just are, you're like, man, work's going good every day. I don't want to screw it. No, no. Go, 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 go challenge, go challenge yourself. So take the next step. Quit drifting. Don't do it. It's not good. Well, if you're a frontline worker and you want to be a leader, like in your thing, mm-hmm. Get the knowledge mm -hmm. and, you know, ask to be on the path to do that. If they say no yeah. and they start stringing you along, mm -hmm. go somewhere else that's going to give you the opportunity or yeah. go do something that's going to give you the opportunity. Challenge yourself, you know, uh, spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. Again, shout out to the Slog Pod. Go listen to episode six. I'm telling you right now, it's going to change your perspective and will help you so much more. I know it helped me a lot. I took it to my job personally and since have seen a pretty dramatic change and it was all because I had and not pushback, but I challenged what somebody was saying and as challenging is into challenging them to look at it from my perspective, but from looking at it from theirs again, from back a couple weeks ago, we did focus mm -hmm. on the newsletter. And kind of look at it from a different angle. Look at it from somebody else's perspective. Right. I'm telling you now. Do that. You'll get out of that drifting mentality. And all of a sudden, it'll be uncomfortable as I'll get out. I'm going to be honest with you because it is. But you'll get out of that drifting mentality. You kind of have to swim or drift. And you want to swim. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, check out the newsletter. Do it. Um, it's free. Like we said, you can unsubscribe whenever you want. Um, Never. You won't, though. Once you're there, you you, you, <laughs> go do it now. Go subscribe. So it's just meant to uh, to add value, and uh, the description you can click on it uh, in the description. While you're down there, go like the video. Hit subscribe. Oh, freaking hey, I've been trying to do that like last couple. Anyway, whatever. You like it? Go subscribe too. We're a small channel. Every little thing you guys do, comment. Every little thing helps us, so we can make more of these, so we can come to you guys more. So we appreciate everybody. Speaking of, speaking of going somewhere, how about uh, New Mexico here? 
<laughs> Trifecta Kappa and Company. I'm gonna let you say the name. Ethiopia. Yep. Gucci. 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 Gucci getting Gucci over here. Not, I'm not bougie. Gucci. <laughs> so, what so are your thoughts? This is more up your alley, I think. Here, well, like I think it's good, but it's more it's, up your alley. It, I would, I would argue, it's more mine than yours. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. It's not very acidic. No, nope. which is good. But I mean, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. I, I'm not saying it's bad, but well, it's I mean, there's a pause there. It's. I mean, I totally disagree. They're saying there's dried plum and mango fruit undertones. I'm getting very woodsy. Not not so much like the like the chocolatey like I feel most coffees have. That coca. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting like a very woodsy woodsy tones. Right? Like it's 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 not Hey move up for a second. I'm, it's not it's not here. bad by any means. But it's it's definitely got the more of the woodsy more of outdoors I don't know. Feeling indoors drinking this coffee, I feel like I'm not getting its full potential. Yeah, one second. I'm trying to look for the other Guji one that we had. This guy back here. It's not bad. Trifecta, you 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 know what you're doing. It's just I feel like you're maybe a little lost. So, so best slope is what we had uh, many weeks ago in Colorado when we compared this one. To this Guji one from Ethiopia, mm -hmm. both the same one. Yeah. This one hits the notes that they're saying. I see. Remind me again. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. But like you taste the oh, apples in that one. This one is it, it talks about plums yeah. and mangoes mm -hmm. and everything. Um, I eat mangoes quite often, like more often I think than uh, many people do. I would I would agree with you. On and that I don't taste any mangoes in this. So. To have a tropical fruit like that and not even come mm -hmm. through. Uh, and, and yes, this is criticism. It's not saying that this coffee's bad. I'm going to drink the whole pot today. Yeah. So it's not like I'm going to be dumping this out or anything. But like I said, it's not bad. I just. The sophistication just, of it is not there, in my opinion. Like, it's not sophisticated to me enough. It's, it's to, there's, there's, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, yeah, you're on the right track, but it's, I don't know. It's not bad. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. I think the best way to say it, it doesn't have an identity. Yeah. Yeah. Right? right? Like we've said that it's, it's a camping coffee or it's an everyday coffee or it's a this or that coffee. I really can't put this in a one kind of yeah, I don't know. Like I, like said, like I said, when you were back there looking for that, I, I feel guilty drinking it inside. Mm. I feel like this should be drank outside. You're doing something like mm. I almost want to compare it to the black rifle coffee we had okay and I'm gonna get a lot of slack for that but it's a moving coffee you're doing something exactly you're moving you're moving you you're, you're gonna go help the buddy move you're moving directly you put it in your thermos you're gonna go and you're gonna work and you just want something to give you a little energy you want a little as I've said before my brother-in-law says a little bean juice you want a little pep in your step I would say this coffee that if I'm trying to find an identity for this coffee, that's what I'm going to give it. It's a working coffee. So you're not sitting down and really thinking about the flavors. Yeah. And, there's and like nothing to really ponder about it. Right. Okay. And I'm not trying to like find a taste to it. It's just coffee. Okay. Co this is coffee. Cool. I'm putting it there. Let's go. Gotcha. You know, you gotta, you're going hunting, you're going fishing, you're going right on a long road trip something that you don't even have to th you don't want to think you right. just want to you want it to do and that's that right so yeah uh oh like it's not bad it's just it doesn't really have much of an identity and i guess it, um going along with your um thought process there because it doesn't have an identity it's kind of like just put it in the thermos or cup and uh just go you know t take it with you on your day but you're not really going to be savoring it it's just gonna yeah like I'll get, like get you through your day because you're getting your coffee or if you're like maybe you're like making like a super extravagant breakfast or you've just had like a very big dinner right you know you don't want to take away from your great breakfast and all the different flavors you've used 
this coffee. If well, you've had a lo very large dinner and you want, you want to just have a nightcap, let everything digest, a nice hot cup of coffee. You don't want to take away from the flavor you've just had. You know, experience the dinner, okay. this coffee. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like a, it's nothing that you really want to like wow the crowd with. This coffee. And as we've said before, I mean, we haven't tried every coffee from Trifecta Maybe we yeah. got the one that doesn't make sense to us, but there's like five other ones that make more sense. Yeah. Uh, so that so that doesn't don't play them as a co like a company or yeah. a roaster. I'm this not, just says yeah. this specific Ethiopia Guji one. In it doesn't opinion, resonate. It doesn't resonate with and us. And this is fully our opinion. And that's just one of me to be very. Um, like on, like we yeah. want to be honest, but at the same time we get like, and I'm not going to digress too much. Sometimes there's a scent that some people don't like, and there's another scent that somebody else likes even more. That's just it doesn't mean it's a bad product. It's just it doesn't meet their noses we're, expectations. We're so, giving our opinion. Yeah, so we're giving our opinion. So, I mean, we've heard it before, Joe. Just real quick, our best damn beard butter. <laughs> we both said we could bathe in it. We love the smell of it. I remember the very first time we were at an expo and a woman walked up and I'll, I'll give you a brief. She went, oh, I don't like that. And I think me and Joe looked at each other like, what the, f did you, what just, what? And you know, that was one person. And I think the rest of the day, and there must have been easily 300 people that came up and smelled the same thing she smelled. And they were like, oh my gosh, I love this smell. Right. You can't. Everybody has a differing opinion. Everybody yep. has different profiles. Yep. That being said, we're that one lady for this coffee. Yep. You could be completely different. So I'm not going to tell you not to go buy it. I can't say personally, I'm going to tell you to go buy it. But I'm not going to tell you not to. It's drinkable. Just It works. It's a one order for us. And we're just going to get the job done. Yeah. We're if you're on. looking for that kind of coffee, yep. I would say this is the one. So this week, don't drift. Don't drift. Um, Unless it snows and then find that church parking lot, but you didn't get that from me. <laughs> so if you're drifting out there, I'll, I'll, I'll stop drifting. You know, I'll get to your best work. You, you just take off the comfort. Get a little uncomfortable. You get a little Taylor Swift and shake it off. <laughs> you would. You would. You <laughs> hey, you open the door. Um, <laughs> but also when it comes to your beer, your beard is your... Get you some oil. Then get you some butter. And then after that, once it's got a little long, you want to, you know, shape it a little bit, get you some balm. Yeah, so your beard is your whole entire identity, and you make it the, the, the best of it. It's on your with face. What you want. Yeah. They, people will see it first. But at the same time, it's what you make of it, too. So um, Make it the best you can. Mm -hmm. Kill Bear Coat Products will do that for you. So, um, anything else? We good? I got nothing, Joe. All right. Well, you guys have a, a wonderful week, and we'll catch you back next week. Another cup of Joe. And Dakota. Cheers. Cheers, everybody.